Day in life of a cocaine addict, alcoholic addict, a day in life of me. This is a day of what my life was like as an addict. And I wanted to share this just because I know that there's a lot of people out there that can relate. At the peak of my addiction, I was drinking two to three fifths of vodka a day and I was doing one to two eight balls of cocaine a day. And this was my typical day, Monday through Friday especially. Um, actually, I, I ran dealerships. So a lot of times my days were, um, typically my days off, I wanna say were Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So essentially from um, Thursday through Monday, this was what my life was like. And this, is, this was my daily occurrence in life. So I will walk you through what it's like to have a day as a cocaine addict. If you're new to the channel, hit the like and subscribe button. What's up guys, my name is Eric and I'm a recovering cocaine and alcoholic addict and I wanna share with you what the day in life of a cocaine addict was like. Um, and I was a very functioning addict. So I'm not a doctor, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a therapist. This is again just my experience and my testimony for the one out there going through and the one out there struggling. So my days, I was always very regimented and routine oriented. So I would wake up typically at about six o'clock every single day um, my alarm would go off. I'm at that time hung over a little bit. My wife at the time would usually still be asleep. I would wake her up about a half hour after me. I would get up, I would start coffee and I would go to the fridge right away to see if I had any alcohol because I needed to, I knew I needed to start getting alcohol in my system because I would start to shake. I'd start to feel sick. I would start to just get the body tremors going. So I would try to find alcohol. A lot of times, unfortunately, because I drank so much, I would have no alcohol left. If I had any kind of alcohol though, it instantly was in my system. If it, whether it was a beer, whether it was a shot, whether it was a little bit and a fifth that I could find in a trash can from the night before. And I'm getting that into my system, walking over to the shower, just getting into the shower now, starting my day, showering, brushing my teeth, all that normal stuff, waking my wife up. And just thinking to myself, literally, I need to get out of the house by about 7.30 because I start work at right around 8.15 and I need to get alcohol by then. So I would end up taking my shower, getting all ready, and I would say goodbye to her and I would go, jump in my truck and I would drive to a 7-Eleven uh, in Huntington Beach and I would stop there. They had 99 bananas. So I would get two 20 ounce uh, sugar-free Red Bulls because of course I care about my health. Uh, I get two packs of Marlboro Menthol 100s and I would get a case of 99 bananas. And if you don't know what a case of 99 bananas are, they're just the little shooters because I wasn't an alcoholic by any means. Um, these were just little shots. I just needed something to jumpstart the day. You know what I mean? So I would literally drive about three miles, taking shot after shot, drinking uh, Red Bull. Uh, and I would literally go through this case of 10 of these by the time I hit my second road that I needed to get on, I, that was on Beach Boulevard. I'd come up to uh, Westminster Boulevard or Garden Grove Boulevard, it was. And I would take a left on uh, Beach and there was a liquor store there and I would stop in there and I would pick up a fifth of Blue UV. I'd have fifth of Blue UV and I would end up driving to work and I would sip on that a little bit and slam the rest of my Red Bull. I'd have one Red Bull left of my cigarettes, park in the parking garage. And I always had cocaine usually the next morning. Um, I, I never really ran out of it because I'd get to the point where I just kind of like black out at night. Uh, so I would open up my glove compartment and next thing you know, I would do two or three lines. Worse that it got, I was doing four, five, six lines. Uh, but I did enough where I felt sober, energized, just big mood energy and let's go and smoke a cigarette and go down. And I would literally start my day. I was a, a sales manager at the time and I would start to do the sales meeting. We'd do our manager's meetings. Uh, the receptionist would come in and I was sleeping with the receptionist, so I'd hit her up to see if she was available that night um, because I wanted to get laid every night by somebody. So I'd hit her up and like all the other girls I knew, even though I was married at the time, I didn't really care because I wanted other people who kind of shared my addiction with me. I uh, didn't really care about my wife, didn't care about anything. I was a very selfish, just toxic human being. Um, now all of a sudden the day's going through and throughout the whole day, I'm worried about, you know, connecting with my hookup, making sure that I had more Coke, going up to the bathroom, doing a couple bumps. Every now and then I would walk out uh, throughout the day to my truck and do a couple swigs of my vodka. And that was my day. I would work through that whole day doing bump after bump and I would watch the clock until, usually I would work until about eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. Um, by that time, uh, I would already have been hooked back up. So now I got more Coke. Uh, if I started running out of alcohol at work, I'd send one of my salesmen to go to the liquor store and buy me more alcohol. 
Um, again, I'm working through this whole thing, thinking that everything's fine. Nobody notices a thing. And yeah, everyone could smell alcohol on me and I'd always lie like, oh, dude, I partied really hard the night before. And that was the end of then of my day. And then I'd find out where everybody was going. Um, I was a sometimes a social butterfly, but also an isolated butterfly. <laughs> um, so depending on my mood, it, what the average night would be is like I'd find out and be like, hey, uh, I'd hit up the receptionist room and be like, hey, let's go do dinner or something. And so we'd go do dinner. Um, she did coke too, so we would drink, end up doing coke, we would fuck in my truck, and I would end up having sex with her a bunch, um, we'd drive around some more, drink some more, I'd kick her out of my truck, and then I would go home, and I would tell my wife, oh, it was a long day or whatever, now I'm home at like 10.30 at night, and I am so blitzed and blasted out of my mind, I don't really fully know what's going on. Still drinking a little bit, but I didn't want to drink and stuff much around her. And so I wouldn't drink a ton around her, but I'd be so blacked out. I wouldn't remember what would happen. Um, we would maybe watch TV or something and we would end up going to bed. And that was like my day. That was like my typical day of an addict. Uh, that's how crappy of a human being I was. I was very self-centered. I was very selfish. And my whole life really revolved around getting high, it was feeding my addiction. Uh, not caring about anyone, hurting a ton of people in the process. And just that was my life. And that is what happens when you become an addict is your life revolves around drugs. It revolves around getting high, revolves around chasing this dragon, chasing this high that you hurt so many people in the long run. And it does destroy and ruin your life. And for the one out there going through it, man, I feel for you because I've been there. And you think that you're on top of the world. You think that it will never get any better than that. You think that uh, it'll never change from that. Like it's never going to end. And it does. And it ends. And it ends hard. And that's what it's about. It's, you know, you do hit rock bottom and you decide, I don't want to live like this anymore. And you pick up the pieces and you start going and putting in the work. I mean, for the one out there struggling, I do have links below to NA and AA for the one struggling. Great resources for it. Hit the like and follow button. Comment down below. Because the one thing I found with addiction is when we're going through it is we are not alone in this. And we're not alone in that fight. And there is a ton of support out there if you reach out for it. Uh, again, not a counselor, not a doctor. I'm diagnosed with ADHD, PTSD, GAD, MDD. Those are my diagnoses. Recovering cocaine alcoholic addict. And I like to share just to remind you that you got this one day at a time. Just don't give up because it will get better.